Hi there and welcome back to this week's video. If you are back, if you are new here, then welcome as well. So this week we are continuing our journey into Octane 2026 Alpha and its feature set. And today we are going to look at Gaussian splats. So this is all there is as a precursor. I'm searching my cup here. So without further ado, let's grab your coffee and let's start right in. Welcome yet again to Cinema 4D Land and our blank canvas for today. Now, believe it or not, but free to download PLI files, which contain our splat for Octane, are very rare on the internet. We of course could produce our own splats with a photogrammetry-like workflow, but it would involve different software and is in itself a very elongated process, so this would be something for a different tutorial. Instead, I want to shout out Spencer Dickerson from SD Imagine, because he was generous enough to lend us some of the splats he did, for example this sunflower here. While we are at it, I also want to shout out the Octane Universe channel on YouTube, because it has a tutorial on the standalone how to deal with Gaussian splats that I derive a lot of my information from. Unfortunately, I couldn't find out the name of the guy that did the exact tutorial here, but the link is down in the description below for both of those legends, Spencer Dickerson and the other unknown hero here. Now, let's finally go back to Cinema 4D and start our own Gaussian Splat journey. To finally bring in the Gaussian Splat of our Sunflower, you have to have installed the 2026 version of Octane Alpha. If you have that, we simply have to go to the objects and then search for Gaussian Splats like this. Like I hinted at before, the Gaussian Splat is a file-based system, so very similar than the VDB, but instead of a volume, of course, you load a Splat file and it's named PLY. We are already in the right location, so let's select the Sunflower as promised and wait a couple of seconds until it's loaded and then it will show up in our live viewer, like this. Unfortunately, in the picture viewer, other than with VDBs, you don't have a bounding box here, so what you have to do is navigate via the live viewer only. So far, you might be forgiven if you think we just loaded a fancy background image, because it looks like that, but let me just add a cube real quick and then turn it around and you can see we really have a 3D object here instead. Now let me try to kill two birds with one stone by going over what Gaussian splats are while explaining those settings here, at least some of them. Now in my limited understanding I would say a Gaussian splat is sort of a fancy point cloud or a point cloud with extra data. To show you, let's set the covariance scale to 0.1, then you can see those little points the object is made out of. And if you look closely, or we can zoom in even more, you can see those are no points, those are actually the splats. So in other words, those are blurry blobs, and the blurriness is actually the Gaussian factor in there. So if we zoom out and make them big enough again, they then form the object and make us forget that it actually consists out of blobs or points. Additionally, and this will not be as visible on this flower, but if you look at the leaves up here and we turn our camera around, you can see that sort of the color is changing dependent on the angle. So splats also have a directionality to them. Dependent on your camera position, they can display certain colors and therefore make the whole rendering more lifelike. This also lets Gaussian splats simulate, for example, reflections or refractions even. Very nice. And the shoutouts continue, so if you want to follow along with the next part, you need a splat. And if you don't have access to my Patreon, where you can download the Sunflower from Spencer Dickerson, you can go to note.com slash steamstudio and get the free download of this splat of a cactus. Just scroll down and somewhere here, there's the download. The other one that I found is from Danny Bittle, and it's a very, very high-res splat of a fly. Just go to dannybittle.ch slash macro, and then down here you can download it. Of course, as always, you can also find the links down in the description below. Now, on with the program. Now, it's about time to explore Gaussian splats within a scene context, so I made this flower pot here. Basically, I brought it in from the asset browser and reshaded it for Octane. 
Now, if we go and make our Gaussian splat object and bring in the sunflower again, and when it loads, you can see it sort of looks strange. On a more positive note though, if we move our flower around, you can see that the intersections are handled correctly. So those are as expected. The thing that is not handled as expected and makes the whole appearance here look strange is A, the lighting and B, the shadowing. As you can see, there is no shadow of the flower on the dirt here as well as on the floor. You might think we need to fiddle around with some of those settings, for example, the shadow strength, but this just makes our flower black, so that's not it. Actually, what we need is an octane object tag. So right click, let's go to extensions, octane, and then object tag. And as soon as we've done that, we have shadows on the floor and the pot. What doesn't match is the way the light is handled. And if we go back to our Gaussian splat settings, we have the lighting mode and it's set to none. This means that these blats are using the lighting situation that they were captured with. If we roll this open, you can see we have two more options, power, which just adds the power of the light source to the Gaussian splats, and then power and color, that additionally to the power also adds the color of the light source. As you can see, this makes the whole appearance a little hot. So what we can do is go to the intensity and set it down to 0.25, for example, so it looks much more reasonable. Right now, we are using an HGI to light the scene, which is Maxim Ross's bathroom, but we can use any other light source as well to light the scene, for example, a standard area light like this. And as you can see, this makes the bland look very unnatural again, as it just glows up. So there's obviously some natural phenomenon missing, and this is the self-shadowing. While the bland casts shadow on the scene, it doesn't cast shadow on itself. So the leaf in front of you would cast shadow on other leaves in the light path behind it. Fortunately, there's a setting for this too. And we even tried it before. And this is the shadow strength. Now it wasn't working because we had no shadows before. So now if we set it to one, you can see it's now lit just by the light. And then the rest is in full shadows. While this sort of looks okay for the stem, it absolutely does not for the leaves because they're usually translucent and right now they are blocking all of the light. So this is a good jumping off point for a small explanation. Don't take the Gaussian splats as geometry because they are not. They're just integrated in our scene, but they come from a totally different scene and therefore you have to sort of tweak them to make them fit in nicely. So one thing you can do here is go to the shadow strength and not set it to one, but to a little bit of a lower value. So you can still see some shadow detail and that makes the leaves here look a little bit translucent. Another setting that you can use to adjust the shadow is the shadow ray offset. So if we use that, you can see what's happening. Basically the shadow moves away from the light. So the Gaussian splats cast shadow, but it only takes effect after a certain distance that you can set here. Of course, those settings are absolutely not photo real. This just helps you to integrate it a little bit better. Now let's go back to the other lighting situation. And unfortunately for different lighting situations, we have to do different settings. And this is also a drawback from Gaussian splats inside of 3D scenes. I think though this kind of works. So let's just clean it up a little bit. 0 0.9, 0.005 here. And then we are good to go further. And we are almost at the end here. I want to mention two more things. First, you might have seen that the leaves now look a bit desaturated. And therefore I want to come to the tint color. This can tint the whole color space of our Gaussian splats. So when we go in here, let's give it a little bit more orange by a U of 40 and a saturation of 50. Now I don't like what it does to the stem, but you can see now it looks a little bit better in the saturation of the leaves. Of course, as always, this is up to personal preference. The other thing that you might have noticed is the light pass ID here. And this is because a Gaussian splat is basically a light source. So if we reset all of its values here, let's do this by going reset to default, then delete the tag so it doesn't cast shadow anymore, and then turn off the HDRI and actually make it a lot brighter, so intensity maybe five, you can see it actually casts light into the scene. 
While this is just the way it works, we can take advantage of that. So if we go back to our initial state with the HGRI and our object looking like this, what we can do is go to our Octane settings, the Render AOV Manager, and add a Light AOV, add it to the same number that we have our Gaussian Splat in, and now we have a pass where just the flower lives. In the future, there will be also different passes for Gaussian Splats that will be helpful for compositing, but right now the Light Pass is the only one that's implemented in Cinema 4D. I'm sure there's a lot more to say about Gaussian Splats, but for now, this should be just an overview, and I think this is all for it today. Also, I really recommend the Octane Universe tutorial on Gaussian Splats that is taking the standalone for a spin, because it's very comprehensive and shows a couple of more scenes and how to handle those. Other than that, I hope you liked this feature video and could take something out of it for yourself. And now, without further ado, let's thank those people who made this video possible. Of course, as always, my patrons. Especially my 50 euro tier subscribers, Shields Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 euro tier subscribers, for D Thieves, Alessio De Vecchi, Ami Schietried, Christian Grajewski, Graham Bucknell, Grigoris Morikis, Joel Mackemer, John Edward, Chris Clemson, Lucas M. Silveira, Mike Rogers, Mikkel Obenhus, Ness Graphics, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Ralf, Random Capybara, Raiko, Shiro2049, Zu Shack, Terry Wayne Ranson, Jan Verbeke, Yasin Rupp, and Yuri Starikov. Hi there, and welcome to the after show party. Thank you very much for staying with me. So, this one seems very short and concise, I think, but it was a nightmare to make. My brain was very foggy this day, so I had to use up a lot of takes for getting it right. For example, I used four hours for the first five minutes to produce. So I really struggled for this one. Hopefully you don't notice too much. To help me against the algorithm overlords this time, of course, what else could it be? Post a sunflower emoticon in the comments down below. This leaves me with my final words. Have a fantastic start of the week. And if you're watching this later, a great time ahead. And I say, Happy splatooning. Bye.